my aim with this is to make this the only bookish gift guide you're gonna need to watch. Like, listen, I'm gonna give you all the answers. It's gonna be something for everyone. So let's go. How are you? Welcome back to my channel. Today, why am I like Ariana grande it? Yeah. I am going to be giving you the ultimate bookish gift guide. So we are going to be chatting about things that I think would be great to get for loved ones in your life for Christmas or to ask for yourself for Christmas. I feel like a lot of these are things for bookish people and book related things. So I feel like these are also things that maybe you would like for Christmas. Now in this video, I'm not going to be recommending books because I've done it in the past and I always feel so stupid because I'm like, this is, this is a great book for your mum. And I'm like, your mum could like anything. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I feel like the people in our lives are not going to have homogenous interests like that I can recommend books based on that so I am recommending like one set of books but mostly it's bookish related things some expensive things some things are literally like five pounds so we've got a mix so yeah hopefully there's going to be something in this to either make you excited to get some of this for someone for Christmas some of these things you're going to like freak out they're so good or to ask for for yourself. But before we get into the video, I wanna say such a big thank you to the sponsor of today's video, which is Boxu. Oh my God, we match. Look at her. So Boxu is a Japanese snack box subscription. Each month has a theme. Let's see what this month's theme is. Oh my God. Hokkaido holidays. Oh my God, look how cute she is. And you get so many snacks in this box. One of my favorite things to always look at first is the culture guide. That tells you where everything is from. So we've got a lot of things from Hokkaido this month. And oh my God, it's just so cute. Okay, let's have a look. I want to try something from here. Oh my God, what? <laughs> White chocolate potato chips. Oh my God, I'm excited but I'm nervous. This is either gonna be the best thing I've ever had in my life or I'm not gonna like it. <laughs> Can you see, it's like a crinkle cut chip. That's really good. Oh my god. So you can use my code MAKEWITHBOOKS for 10% off your unique Japanese snack box subscription. And I wanted to put them in this video because they are genuinely a great gift. I know some of you have already <laughs> ordered Boxu to give to like loved ones in your life. So this isn't bookish related, but I love when I get like subscriptions to something for like a month, three months, because it's kind of like the gift that keeps on giving. So I genuinely feel like Boxu would be a great gift to someone in your life who loves travel, who loves Japanese culture. And like I've mentioned in my last few sponsorships, they are actually hosting a giveaway where a lucky winner is going to get tickets to travel to Japan and all you need to do is have your subscription by December 31st. I'll leave all the terms and conditions down below but I love Boxu. I think it's such a cool thing. I love trying out all the different snacks throughout the week. So yeah, I'll leave the link down below and oh my god, I, I'm very excited to eat more of those crisps after I film this. <laughs> okay, let's get into the video. Where do we start? Okay, we are going to start with bookish games. If you're going to play a game, girl, play it right. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna start with bookish games. I have five here to, to talk to you about. We have a lot of games. I feel like games is making up a lot of this video. My family love playing board games. We're like super into board games. My parents are super into board games. And I've picked some of my favorite bookish related ones. Let's talk about this one first. This is one of my favorites. We have 22 Wannabe Baker Street, which is obviously Sherlock Holmes inspired. This is so much fun. I'm actually, can I say that? Okay, little tease to everyone watching this video. In a couple months, I am, gonna have something coming out inspired by this game um <laughs> i don't want to say anything more you naughty naughty you teasing me you naughty naughty <laughs> This game I absolutely love. So essentially, let me actually, I'm gonna like get this shit out. In this game, essentially you're Sherlock Holmes. You get given a case. It's just like on a little piece of uh, piece of card like this. There's 75 in total. I think we've played about like three. Then you wanna go around the board, ta-da. Um, and these are all different locations. So you've got the hotel, the theater, the pawnbroker, the museum. There's loads of different locations. Each one of those, you've got to travel to it, like roll the dice, travel to it, and you'll get a clue. 
and there's on the back of this for each location there is a clue number and then there's a whole book with all the different clues in it basically you want to try and figure out the case as quickly as you can and be the first one to figure it out before anyone else in your like group does there's also like red herring so there's clues that make you think one thing when really you need another clue to realize that that's fake so it's really fun like i love it i'm bad at it <laughs> i never win just gotta try and have a pma the folks are pm positive mental attitude get fucked because <laughs> i get sucked in by all the red herrings i just believe like this is the same thing in why i enjoy mysteries because i just allow myself to be suckered in and like tricked so it's a really fun game though i love the theming i love trying to solve a mystery this is one of my favorite games we play then the game that's mine not my family's is the tea dragon society card game so if you know there she is the tea dragon society is one of my favorite graphic novels and this is the card game that goes along with it it is so cute whoa basically it's just kind of like a deck builder game it's hard to explain it's a little bit complicated but like it's just about the cute cards <laughs> it genuinely is just about all the cute like different tea dragons that you get in the in the cards basically is why i play it but it's really cute i've never known like a graphic novel to have a card game before and it's just really really cute so i've i've played this a couple times with my family and i really enjoy playing that as well another one of my favorite ones we played is athenium mystic library and this one basically you you're just building shelves of books. <laughs> Right, it's good though it's so good so you'll get like objective cards where you want to have certain shapes or combinations of books on your shelves and basically they get you certain points and whoever has like the most points and the most combinations and stuff at the end wins and so you have all these in the box you have all these little individual books which you can place on your shelves in different combinations that was a really fun one and i think i won or came second in that one so that was one i was actually quite good at hey. <laughs> Success. And then we've got one that my family have played a couple of times, but I haven't played yet. I, just, I really want to know. I've just been away when they've played it. And that is Obsession, Pride, Intrigue, and Prejudice in Victorian England. This is kind of inspired, I know it's Victorian, but it's kind of inspired by um, Pride and Prejudice. And essentially you have like a family and the uh, idea is to build up your estate, build up your staff, build up your guests and you want to seduce or entice this other rich family across the way and become friends with them basically it's basically like Pride and Prejudice and my mum was telling me that like you hold events where the guests that you have there like some guests have plus points some might really they have all different attributes all the different guests so some might like to gossip a lot and that's a minus point it's like your overall score but you can learn information from the gossip which is like can then help you you hold events to like increase your standing you hold like tea parties or like i don't know golf on the lawn not golf on the lawn tennis on the lawn stuff like that and it just sounds super cute so if you like Pride and Prejudice, Jane Austen, that kind of thing, Downton Abbey, all of those kind of things. Or if someone in your life does, I would recommend getting them this game. And then just quickly, this one is a much more expensive, much more kind of like bougie option. But um, some of you will remember, my hair is just everywhere, sorry. <laughs> some of you remember I worked with Hunter Killer for their Agatha Christie game, and I love it. <laughs> like I genuinely wish, whoa, this is the kind of game you could play again, but it's not. The whole purpose of Hunter Killer and what they do is you solve a mystery. But basically it's this box called the based on the story the mystery of hunter's lodge and if you didn't see the video where i did the sponsorship you get all of these like items and sheets and letters and pieces of information and diaries even all of this stuff <laughs> i'm just like struggling to hold it up and you have to solve this mystery there's been a murder and you have to figure out who's done it using all the information and it's definitely like you know you only play it once it's something you want to have like a big group for but if someone in your life loves agatha christie loves kind of like solving mysteries kind of games where you solve mysteries this was amazing like the quality of everything in here is absolutely phenomenal so that i would really recommend it if it's something you're interested in i might still have a link like a code for it i'll see i'll put the code in the description i don't know if it will still work but um yeah you can check that out as well okay now we've got the vast majority of the video in the games out the way i've just got other little things that i think would be great per purchases so where do we start two quite affordable things that have made a big difference to my reading experience that i feel like would be great as like stocking feathers or just little extra things to get for people in your lives if they enjoy reading do not underestimate right don't underestimate a reading life never underestimate the sea don't underestimate it the amount of times i've been in a room the lights are off like tom's gone to sleep i still want to read and i can just clip this it's a clipper one 
I just got it on Amazon. I think it was like five pound. Clip it onto your book. Hang on, I will show you. Like so, just clip it onto the back. It works for paperbacks as well, this one as well. And then you've got the reading light to read your stuff and it's great. This one, you can also increase the brightness. I'll show you. Can you see the brightness increases three times on this one? I just feel like this is something that like all book lovers should own. So if someone in your life or you want that, like I feel like it's just like an essential part of my reading now. So um, yeah, and it's one you can like move about, which is very useful as well. Also an integral thing that again is like 10 pound or something, a reading stand. So I've got one that folds down for good storage. And then you just hold it, hold it up like that, have that. What's it called? The Brilliant Reading Rest is what this one's called. And then those things hold the book in place. So you can literally like put that down on your bed if you wanted to like not hold your book while you're reading, on your desk, whatever. It's also useful for people who are studying, have to use books for studying. So yeah, this is like another thing I use so much. I don't really feel myself using it because I don't think it like, I don't think, I don't know. I feel like I'm most, I use it when I'm most tired. So like, I don't want to be filming then. So like, you probably don't know that I use it. Same for the reading light because it's like when I'm, in the dark and don't want to, anyone to see me. <laughs> but yeah, a super useful thing I feel like, you know, all book lovers should own. I would recommend getting one that you can fold down to store away. Because as someone who has too much shit, like I have too much shit, I can't imagine having to store it folded up somewhere. Another Christmas recommendation for a book lover in your life or anyone who likes reading in your life, I feel like candles are essential. And you may call me a basic bitch for this, but my favorite candles are Woodwick candles. <laughs> I love them. Me talking about why I need to burn these specific candles every day. I just do because I feel better. If I feel better, I'm nicer. If I'm nicer, my life goes better. I know it's kind of basic. I know I think they're owned by Yankee Candle now, but like Yankee Candle, not in this house. I don't like Yankee Candles. Here's the thing, I'm very specific because I feel like they're too hard. <laughs> Whereas Woodwick Candles, the wax is so soft. I could literally press into this if I wanted to. I don't really want to do it because I don't want to ruin it. But I could like press into the candle and like the wax would move. And I really like that because you get a quicker burn, like a more even burn. You don't get the whole like whole thing. What's that thing called? Where like your candle, part of the candle is never going to burn because you've like burnt a hole in it. So the two flavours, two flavours? What am I getting up to my candles? The two scents that I have at the moment from Woodwick that I love are vanilla bean, um, I love a good vanilla, and caramel toasted sesame. It's kind of basic, I know they're everywhere, but like I love Woodwick candles. Then the only books I'm gonna recommend on this list is special editions. I feel like special editions are really fun things to get people in your life. My favorite special editions that I own are my Agatha Christie ones. I've just grabbed three of them. This is Death on the Nile. My favorite one probably is Murder on the Orient Express. I do love that one. And also we have the ABC Murders. These are just gorgeous, like cloth bound, detailed. I just love how they all look. The artwork is all carried onto the back as well. And I just love these. I just think they're like literally the best thing ever to exist. <laughs> so I feel like maybe getting like one or two of these for someone in your life who likes like the Christie or just likes beautiful books is definitely worth it. Cause they just, I think they look so good on shelves. Like I have these all face out on my shelves and I just think they look amazing. Amazing. I just absolutely love them. So I feel like these would be a great thing to open. I, not only are you opening a book, but you're opening a beautiful book. And I feel like more so that's something that's really fun to give people for Christmas, something that looks gorgeous as well as is a book to read, you know? Okay, just a few more things. My next recommendation is a good pair of wireless headphones. So these are essential, I feel like. I have totally leveled up. I, I'm never gonna wear in-ears again. I hate them. I hate in-ears. Death to all of them. Oh. I have very small, I don't know if I've talked, have I talked about this before? I have tiny ear holes. Okay. <laughs> when I go on holiday, I have to wear earplugs if we go swimming because my ears get infected at the drop of the hat. Like my ears just get clogged and then infected. So I don't like in-ears. So having a good pair of wireless headphones, you can listen to, I listen to audiobooks so much more now. I did also buy these for work purposes because I edit with them, but these have just like made me listen to audiobooks so much more. I feel like listening to audiobooks when you read or listening to like music or soundscapes um, is such like an enjoyable thing when you have a good pair of headphones. So the ones I have, here I got them a couple months ago now I think they're like end of September these are hold up I have to recite the name the Sony WH-1000 XM3 on-ear wireless headphones oh also they had to be on-ear when I was looking I was like I'm not having over-ear my ears aren't about to be crushed I want to be 
surrounded by a soft cushion. And these are just so good. I can't like hear myself now. I can't hear anything. They are so good at noise cancelling. Like literally, if you're trying to have a conversation with me, if you're trying to like go, hey Megan, well I've got these, you've literally got to come in front of my face and wave. So yeah, I really like using these for editing. They're also, they fold down very well to go in the case. You just fold them down like that. I also, I do tend to use them wired. So it has, does come with a wired connection. I use them wired when I'm editing just cause I don't want any like sound delay between the picture and the wireless headphones, which is kind of natural. It's like literally like a millisecond, but I'm really picky about that kind of stuff when editing. So I do use it wired, which I like that it has the option. And I have just honestly been amazed with these headphones ever since I got them. So they are expensive. They're about, I think between 150 and 200 pounds. They were a big investment for me. But if you wanted to get a big gift for someone in your life or you're looking for wireless headphones and you want them to kind of be the big gift to you, these would be my recommendations because they're so so good and then my final recommendation is book sleeves i feel like these are such a fun thing to get someone in your life who loves reading if they're traveling taking books around with them you know you don't want your books to get damaged so all of my ones that i have i have even more than this they're all fairy loot or illumicrate i believe these two we have one that's strange dreamer one that is daughter of smoke and bone they're both illumicrate these two are both fairy loot that was the first um book sleeve i ever got and i remember like freaking out <laughs> so yeah i feel like a book sleeve is just like a really cute thing to get someone in your life or to ask for for yourself like i said all of these are from book boxes but there's loads on etsy like there's so many types on etsy and you can get one that like maybe for that person their favorite book is on the cover or something like that and i just i just I've been revolutionized by book sleeves. I think they're just such a great little gift to get someone for Christmas. So there we have it. That is my holiday gift guide. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I hope you have gotten some ideas for what you might like to get someone for the holidays in your life. And if you've gotten to the end of this video, comment a candle emoji if you've gotten to the end. And don't forget to go check out Boxu as well. I'll leave a link and my code down in the description. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon in another video. Bye. Yeah.